Hello, my happy crumping war gamers, and welcome back to another episode of Happy Crumping War Gaming. Today, I have an extremely awesome and exciting video for you today. We will be rocking it out, and we will figure out exactly how to utilize one of the most powerful keywords in the entire game. We are talking, of course, about the elusive, the mysterious, the ninja of the 41st millennia. And this is the Infiltrators in 40k. So essentially what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the Infiltrator's special role, how they actually fulfill that role, and why it is critical to your army to have probably at least one unit with the Infiltrator keyword. Because they do a lot more than what most people really think about. So for example, Infiltrators have a variety of things. We're going to talk about all of these in details. And uh, I'm going to save the best for last because, you know, YouTube. <laughs> and then I'm actually going to talk about the best Infiltrators in the game. So Infiltrator special roles. First off, they have early game pressure. Uh, we'll go a little bit more into detail that in the next slide. They act as springboards. So there are actually examples where you don't really want to use Infiltrators. And we'll talk about that as well. They're amazing at move blocking. They're incredible for early game scoring. And they screen like absolute pros. So let's talk about the first a uh, little blip I have here, which is early board pressure. So this will provide actually pretty big issues for a lot of enemy armies. So take your Akinthrites from the Necrons, especially in a detachment like Canoptic Court, because they get just actually get to start in the midfield where they have deployed upon the objectives. So they just start the game with controlling the objectives in midfield. So the entire army essentially gets reroll hit rolls just from this. So they don't even have to work to get their uh, their detachment bonus. It's very very exciting. However, there's another thing you have to consider. Normally speaking, when we deploy, we deploy in such a way that we cannot be seen from the opponent's deployment zone or be seen from where the opponent can move in turn one. This basically keeps us safe turn one. A lot of people don't do this, and that's a mistake. Uh, if you need more help on deployment, then you should probably sign up for coaching and we can go through deployment in depth for you. Anyway, let's go back to infiltrators here. However, when you have, say, the Akathrites who have the infiltrate keyword, these nerds are going to be hanging out and they're going to get to move from the midfield, which will get them angles that you're not prepared for. And they have these melta guns that now get to reroll hit rolls because you also control the objectives in midfield. So they can actually shoot things with damaging guns that you were not prepared to get shot with turn one. And that can really change the tide of battle. Then we can also have infiltrators that are there for early melee pressure. So for example, if you have some little soft griblies that are on the front line in your deployment zone, you have orc commandos that's deploys nine inches away from your deployment zone and then moves on up can actually really, really do some devastating things in a turn one charge. Now, I am not necessarily a commando fan because they are extremely expensive, but the melee pressure they provide can actually be quite useful. Now, for those of you who um, were like, wait a second, Johnny, I, I think you skipped a step. Let me just take a quick breather here and I'm gonna explain to you what an infiltrator actually is. What a unit with the infiltration keyword does is they are allowed to deploy anywhere on the battlefield outside of nine inches of the opponent's deployment zone and outside of nine inches of enemy models so that'll be really really important in a moment when we talk about like how screening with infiltrators okay but for the first step you can have amazing shooting and amazing pressure uh, from melee with infiltrator units that would not really be available via other methods in the game. So now let's talk about the first way, uh, the the reason to not use infiltrators. This is called in my this is uh, patented spring boards. There are going to be a lot of times in the game where you don't necessarily need to be using infiltrators. And so what I've got here, if you guys uh, probably want a big screen, is I just took this picture that I set up in TTS for you guys. Um, maybe I can make it a little bit larger here if I do like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it much bigger here. Uh, but anyway, so. What we've got here is we've got a picture of some Space Marine Scouts that are in the middle objective. Well, since they're in the middle objective, well, actually what happens is your opponent, who's orcs, if they go first, they can actually get a charge onto those scouts, which get them way closer to your battle lines than you really want them in turn one. Because they'll charge, they'll kill the scouts, and then they might be able to consolidate into exciting areas. So, for example, if these were Blood Angels, I might even be able to get to use a strat for a 6-inch consolidate to actually tag your models in melee on your deployment line, which would be a disaster for you turn one. So sometimes against high-pressure melee armies, you don't necessarily want to be using Infiltrate, even though it is a very powerful and good keyword. This would also apply to some of the new Orc Detachments, because they have a 6-inch consolidate, and there's, there's, there's a few others in the game as well that... Uh, not not coming to mind right now but you got to be quite careful of that because it can really wreck your day let's move on to the next scenario 
move blocking. Now, this is my personal favorite thing to do with my infiltrators, and it's probably one of the best, probably the single best infiltrating unit in the game is a pro at it. So these are Space Marine Scouts. So what I did here is I had two units of scouts. And in this particular scenario, I have my scouts deployed nine inches away from the de from the Votan's deployment zone. Then what I did is I moved my scouts up their full six inches in turn one. Now remember, you can't you can't use their scout move to get closer than nine inches because you still can't even with a scout move you can't end their move within nine inches of enemy models or within nine inches of enemy um, deployment zone. But you can still do your normal move of six inches, so they end up being three inches away from the opponent's deployment line. And then what I did here is I charged this unit of scouts on the left into one Sagittar and then into Sagittar number two. I did not charge the Sagittar in the middle. And the reason for this now is only two Sagittars get to hit me. They're not going to kill my scouts, and not, in, not in melee at least, which means that they will not be able to move in my opponent's turn number one. This is assuming that I, as the Space Marine player in this scenario, went first. Now what's going to have to happen is these Sagittarum are going to have to make the decision. Do they stay still and try to shoot just into the scouts, or do they fall back, which means they cannot shoot? Um, that is a bit of a problem. The scout, the the Sagittar on the left will probably still be able to get to do a normal fallback, but the Sagittarum um, on the right here, because there's three, uh, I'm talking about the Sagittarums that are left towards the Hecaton Fortress. So the Sagittarum on the furthest right actually would have to move backwards. They cannot go forwards unless they take a desperate escape test, which can be disastrous because they would fall back on top of the models, and then on a one or two, the Sagittar could just die turn one. Then the Sagittar in the middle really has no choices at all, simply because since he's not in melee, he doesn't have the option of doing a fallback and taking a desperate escape test. He literally just can't move through my models. Then on the right, I've got another unit of scouts that didn't actually charge. They just advanced up to be an inch away from these Hecaton land fortresses, which essentially makes it so that these Hecaton land fortresses cannot move in turn one, which is an absolute nightmare and disaster for the Votan player. Now, I'm not really move blocking the Votan bikes because they have the fly keyword and they could fly over, but I've already sufficiently just locked the Votan in their deployment zone completely turn one, which more or less means that the Votan can't leave their deployment zone until turn two at the absolute quickest, which is a big problem for them because then now I'm going to have my, I'm going to be completely staged. I'm going to have complete board presence. So move blocking is extremely powerful. It can just auto win some games and it can also invalidate secondaries. Uh, just as a little side note, if you are an Adeptus Mechanicus player, this is actually how I recommend you play. You can't use Space Marine Scouts, of course, but you will use your Service Raiders for their scout move. You will use your uh, Sky Stalkers for move, scoot, shoot. You will use your Rangers with Vanguard with the enhancement from the Marshal to completely move block your opponent in turn one. And that can just automatically win a game. So I highly recommend you guys use these Infiltrators to do amazing things like this, which your opponent will hate. But you'll love it because you will crush, you will crump some opponents. Let's go on to scoring. So infiltrators open up a really unique and interesting way to score. So they can set up extremely easy scoring turn one. Let's say, for example, that we are playing, oh, I don't know, a tactical. And you you can set your infiltrators to be on all, or just start on these objectives that can be really hard to reach turn one, which means, boom, Free tempting target. Boom, secure no man's land, super easy, and you can't shoot me. Boom, there's just so many things that can just make it so easy for you to do. And do not forget, you can also do this to deny your opponent scoring. One of the things about move blocking is now they can't move forward to actually score secondary. So it is actually really, really important and critical for you to understand that you can use these infiltrators to really give yourself a scoring bonus and really deny your opponent scoring. Then lastly, let's talk about screening. Now, this is really key here, okay, because infiltrators and uh, the scout keyword, they cannot be moved. So, oh, let me take it one step at a time. Any infiltrators cannot be set up within nine inches of your infiltrators. Well, the rule is they can't be set up within nine inches of any enemy models, but I mean, your infiltrators are obviously enemy models to the opponent. And enemy scouts moves cannot end their scout move within nine inches of any of your models. So what you can do is you can actually set up your infiltrators to be in such a position that denies your opponent the ability to even use their abilities. So if I set my scouts up in a line like this, if you can see the bubbles I drew around them, which are exactly nine inches in length, the Votan player who has a nine inch scout move literally cannot use the bike scout move, even if they go first. 
because they would have to scout first and they can't end their move within nine inches of my scouts. So effectively, I say, no, you don't get to have fun. You're not allowed to use your rules. But my scouts will actually still be allowed to use their scout move because the way it works is the player who goes first does all of their scout moves first. And then the player who goes second will then do all of their scouts. So what this allows for is it allows you to completely eliminate the opponent's special rules. And that is extremely, extremely powerful. Now let's take a moment here and we're going to talk about the best infiltrating units in the entire game. And I'm going to talk about why they are and why I recommend you use them. But before I do that, just so you know, everyone, Happy Carpet Wargaming is doing amazing stuff. I've got a, a huge, a huge support group and an amazing just general group of men and women. Actually, yeah, we have women in there too in the Discord where we're constantly talking about tactical advantages in the game. We're also sharing a lot of culture and stuff. It is a blast to be a part of, and I am extremely grateful for every single supporter in that Discord. If you'd like to join the members only section, you will get access to very in-depth tactical knowledge. You'll get access to brotherhood and sisterhood, and you will get access to our community only TTS tournaments where people are dramatically improving their game Every single time we run these things, we're currently in our second one, and it is amazing to watch just how much better people are getting at the game over the course of these little TTS tournaments. So if you want to help support the video, help, <laughs> help support the channel, go ahead and join up as a member today. You can do that via YouTube memberships, or you can do that via Ko-Fi in the link down below. Simply link your Ko-Fi or YouTube membership, and you can attach that to your Discord, and you'll get your role automatically signed, and we will have a blast hanging out there. So let's go on into the best, the absolute best top infiltrators in the game. Number one, my vote is going to be scouts. These bad boys can be deployed extremely aggressively. And then if you go second, you get to scout backwards and to be into safety. So let me just show you this picture up here that I did. So let's go back to this. The reason why I'm able to deploy this aggressively with my scouts is because in this scenario, if I go first, I just get to move forward and charge or, and or move block his entire army in turn one. If I went second, since they also have the scout word in addition to the infiltrate keyword, I would just scout them backwards six inches completely behind cover so that my opponent can't kill them turn one. It is an unbelievably versatile unit. And even though they went from 50 points to 65 points, they are clearly the best infiltrators in the game. And uh, I cannot possibly build a Space Marines list without scouts. Then infiltrators, Shockingly enough, infiltrators are great infiltrators, and they get to screen massive swaths of the battlefield to, especially to your uppy downy armies. So, for example, I get to deploy my infiltrators in such a position that would deny my opponent, who's maybe bringing um, gray knights or hypercrypt necrons, who's going to be picking guys up and teleporting them in turn one. I can have them in a position that makes it essentially useless for them to use that ability turn one, which can be absolutely game, defi game defining. Akinth rights for necrons. This is super, super powerful. These guys will proc the Canoptic Quartz Power Grid on turn one. You can just start with it. This is a very, very powerful ability. And then we have like GSC Neophytes with the Infiltration Enhancement. These guys get to deny essentially all other pregame moves. Because the model, the unit is so massive, you can place them down on the, in the midfield, stretch them across the entire battlefield so it's impossible for your opponent to ever put any of their infiltrators down. And then because you get to redeploy models, you just redeploy that unit so that they're not exposed. It is so powerful, and it is because of that. These are the four of my top picks for the best infiltrators in the game. If you guys like this video, please smash the like button down below. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. I am building this, this channel up as much as I possibly can. I'm looking forward to actually getting some microphones up here in a little bit and try to get a little bit more quality content for you guys. But I love producing these videos, and if you guys enjoy them, let me know in the comments down below. If I miss any of the infiltrators that you guys think are the best in the game go ahead and type them down and you know i basically discuss these things with everyone in the comment section because i love everyone's support and i like hanging out with you guys so if you guys want to support you are more than welcome to sign up for the members only discord where we talk about amazing stuff every single day if you're looking for coaching you can also sign up for coaching in my ko-fi link down below stay tuned because what i'm going to be doing later on this week is releasing a video exclusively on how to do these move blocks that I was talking about because it is an incredibly critical skill and I don't want to just tell you to do things I want to show you how to do those things so that's what we're going to do in that video it might be a little longer and a little more in depth but it's going to be absolutely dramatic for your level of play so until next time that is the end of the video um bye